Town and Cape Elizabeth Zoning Board of Appeals. First order of business is roll call, and I'd like for each board member to introduce themselves, and that will be our roll call for the evening. Starting at the right. Uh, Stephen LaPlante. I'm Joe Guglielmetti. Uh, Jim Walsh. Jay Chatmus. Michael Trampalia. Gib Mendelson. Thank you. We have six of the seven board members attending. Uh, the seventh board member was vacated by uh, Jack Neely. I'll mention that in, the, in a moment. The first order of business is approval of the January 27th minutes. Do we have any comments from board members? I have a, I'm sorry, go ahead. that they be accepted. I have a comment on page two, line four. Uh, stated that the addition was constructed two years ago. Adding the words, the addition was constructed two years ago. On page three, line one, they would need to reapply to have the use reinstated. And on line two, the second half of the sentence, what would be the use of the space prior? Those are my only two comments. Jim? Move that the minutes be accepted with the additions. Seconded. All those in favor? With Joe abstaining. All opposed. Uh, Joe was absent from that meeting. Uh, first announcement I'd like to make at this time is that Jack Keneally has recently ended his membership on the Zoning Board of Appeals. He applied to fill the vacated uh, planning board position and was accepted. Jack was a member of the board since 19. 99. He served as secretary for the last two terms. Um, we wish to thank him for all of his fine contributions and, and wish him well in his new position on the planning board. Um, Jack was our secretary for the zoning board of appeal. Uh, the secretary position is, is more properly described as a vice chairman with, with the uh, duties being simply to take the place of the chairman in his absence. What I'd recommend is that we <clears throat> vote on that, uh, nominate a replacement for the secretary at the end of the meeting and vote on it at that time. That'll give us all a few minutes to consider that. There is no old business, so we'll immediately proceed to the new business. And the <clears throat> and that is to hear the request of Catherine Robinson of 5 Oakwood Road, tax map U24, lot 24, for a conditional use permit to operate a home business specifically a therapeutic massage office and treatment room. At this time, I'd like to invite Ms. Robinson or her representative to come forward to the podium, introduce yourself, and if you would kindly state your address. I shall. Um, Mr. Shatma and members of the board, my name is Bill Nugent. I'm the attorney for Catherine Robinson. Um, could you, I'm sorry, could you spell that name, please? N-U-G-E-N-T. Thank you. And my address is 75 Pearl Street, Suite 216 in Portland. I just would like to address the board briefly and in an introductory manner, and then I'm going to let Ms. Robinson um, uh, address you as well. She has brought um, uh, a couple of clients uh, who would also like to, to have an opportunity to, to address you. The issue, obviously, is for a conditional use permit. And I submit to the board that this 
the proposal by Ms. Robinson, which is to um, open a part-time massage therapy practice in her home at 5 Oakwood Road, is about as low impact a type of business operation as one could have in one's home. It is a practice that will only have Ms. Robinson. There will be no other employees. Um, and looking at the standards for conditional use approval, I'd like to address some of the, uh, some of the concerns that, that may be voiced by people in the neighborhood or certainly by the board with regard to this application. Um, obviously, any conditions prescribed with the permit, should it be granted, will, will of course be, be recognized and, and followed by Ms. Robinson. But subsection two of your standards indicates that the proposed use will not create hazardous traffic conditions when added to the existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. The proposal by Ms. Robinson is to have no more than five clients in, in any day, which would indicate, obviously, that there would just be 10 uh, additional trips um, on Oakwood Road rather uh, compared to, to uh, if she did not have a business there. In fact, the five clients a day is probably quite ambitious and would may very well never be fulfilled by Ms. Robinson because of the physically taxing nature of uh, massage therapy. It will be a part-time practice, and to consistently have five clients a day would, in fact, be something that, that would be uh, not physically possible for her to do. So at a maximum, there would be no more than five <coughs> clients a day, which would be 10 trips, additional trips on, on Oakwood Road. Um, in addition, the practice doesn't necessitate the delivery of any kind of uh, equipment or uh, products or anything else. So there would not be any issue about having delivery trucks coming to the, uh, to the house at all. So there would be no traffic increase um, on that part. With regard to, the, uh, to number three <coughs> of the standards, the proposal will not create unsanitary conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions to the air, or other aspects of its design or operations. Obviously, massage therapy uh, doesn't create any of the, uh, the problems uh, contemplated by subsection three. Um, the proposed use, subsection four, the proposed use will not adversely affect the value of adjacent properties. We submit that, that, that there really is no issue with regard to any adverse um, change in the property values because the nature of the practice itself makes it essentially invisible for anyone else in the neighborhood. There is going to be virtually, the proposal uh, as indicated, there'll be virtually no signage. There will be one sign that will be attached to the house below the number, uh, the house number uh, on Five Oakwood Drive, and it'll be the size of uh, any of your name tags there. It will be in brass and it will simply say Featherstone. The purpose for that is to simply show clients that they're to come to the front door as opposed to the side door of the, of the house. Anyone driving by uh, would not even be able to see that from the road. So there's not going to be any question of signage or anything else. In addition, um, Ms. Robinson, for reasons unrelated to the business, is actually putting up a front porch and, and there'll be some lattice work in the front. So it's questionable whether anybody actually from the road could even see that particular sign. Um, Number five, the proposed site plan and layout are compatible with adjacent property uses and with the comprehensive plan. And I, I submit there's nothing that would be adverse um, uh, in this particular kind of business to uh, any of the uses of the property. Ms. Robinson um, wants to have the, uh, uh, her office in her home. She has a child who is, her youngest child is an eighth grader at Cape Elizabeth Middle School. Um, for those reasons, she would like to be able to practice uh, uh, from her home as opposed to, to an office. Um, and also for financial considerations because um, this is going to be a part-time practice on her part um, and will not be a full-time practice. Um, in addition, 
because of the limited number of clients there's not going to be any excessive parking or the parking is not going to be an issue the scheduling of the clients will be such that probably there will be only one additional car in the driveway at any given time possibly if there are back-to-back appointments for a brief period of time there might be two additional cars in the driveway I submit having known the Robinson family for a long time that now that her eldest three are in college or out of the home they're probably going to be fewer cars parked in the driveway than when they were teenagers and and all their friends over at the house too so that's not going to add to any any additional burden to the neighborhood the the final provision subsection 6 regarding the design and external appearance appearance of any proposed buildings I think we've already addressed there will be really no change whatsoever the single change would be this brass plaque that's going to be below the number on next to the door of the house I submit that if if there is a type of business that should be allowed a conditional use permit this would be the kind of business I I really believe there could be very few other activities that would be as low impact and really as invisible in the neighborhood as this particular activity that Ms. Robinson is asking the conditional permit for and I'm going to allow a lot let her address address you and and answer any questions that you might have but I'll be happy to answer any questions if I've raised any now but otherwise I'll let her take the podium that's okay thank you Mr. Nugent Ms. Robinson do you want me to you know where I live okay would you your Catherine Robinson what please introduce yourself okay my name is Catherine Robinson and I live at 5 Oakwood Road in Cape Elizabeth thank you okay I think all of you have the note the letter that I wrote and it's quite thorough you understand where the sign is going to be put where the practice will be and I'm wondering if you have any questions about that I also would like to say that one of the reasons that I would like to have a business in my home is because if I have to rent an office space I will be unable to practice as a massage therapist I can't physically do the number of clients it would take to rent an office space and break even so if I can't do this in my home here I will not be able to practice as a massage therapist successfully so that's one thing that I don't think I put in the letter the other thing that I would like to say is that I have had people in the neighborhood have talked to me and said they have no problem but they didn't feel that they wanted to come to this meeting because it was going to be difficult to keep the neighborhood calm if there was a lot of argument but I do have one letter that I'd like to read from Doug McAllister who is at 1 Oakwood Road he did write a letter said as an Oakwood neighbor I just wanted to let you know that I fully support your efforts to establish a small home business in your home I think it's important especially in these difficult economic times to have this right and to exercise it good luck in your enterprise and it says at the bottom feel free to show this note and support at your hearing and so I have it I did not make copies but I wanted to submit this to the board to let you know that there is that and other people signed a petition but I was feeling a lot of adversarial feelings throughout the neighborhood so I didn't have too many people sign the petition and then I just decided I would present them with a letter stating my position and I did that I have some clients in the back that would like to speak about some of their concerns 
since i decided to open my practice in january i have been going to clients homes all of the clients that are the clients that are here i used as practice on to practice on when i was a student and when i had to start charging money in january i had to start going to their home because i'm not allowed to practice until i got my zoning and i'm having a difficult time um, doing the right kind of massage atmosphere in some homes is very difficult there's not enough room um, the phones ring it's disruptive the people may not want you to come into their home because it's cluttered they don't feel like cleaning it and a lot of clients have said that of course I can go to their homes but they really don't want me to they would rather they come to a room that is specifically for that purpose out of their home where there is no phone there is no TV there are no kids slamming doors and they can totally relax and get the best benefits out of the massage and when I can practice in a room where I know where everything is and I have the right equipment I can give the best treatment to my clients and I don't need to um, spend the extra time packing and hauling the table it's very disruptive so I'd like to um, call up um, Patty Bothell. We'll She's open the uh, oh, work to public discussion in just a moment. Oh, okay. Uh, we'll be happy to hear from your clients and, and uh, other people who have come to support you. Uh, we'll do that shortly. Uh, I'd like to, one question I had, that the letter in, that you read in support, what was the name and address of that individual? Um, that Since is, we do not have a copy of that. I'm sorry, I can give it to you. It's Douglas McAllister, 1 Oakwood Road in Cape Elizabeth. What was that? Doug, Douglas McAllister. What was the address? 1 Oakwood Road. 1, okay, thank you. Would you like me to make copies and put it with the application? You can submit that to... Uh, our secretary, then she'll okay. pass that. Uh, any members of the board, would you like to pose questions to the applicants at this time? I'd like to get um, an idea of the profile of your average uh, you know, patient, if you will, someone that comes to utilize your services. Because up till now, it looks like you've been working maybe from referrals and certain ads in the paper. Right. Just out of curiosity, is it typically someone that's uh, referred to you by a chiropractor or physician? I have two types of clients. Um, some people come to me for a relaxation massage, and that's through word of mouth. If they're under a lot of stress or they just um, would like to, to try a massage, and those are um, just members of the community through word of mouth. But I also have uh, clients referred to me through um, the, uh, physicians and um, chiropractors with specific um, problems. And so I have both types of clients. Uh, the people that come for relaxation massage, they will come maybe once a month. So that's how you're operating now without, without any room right. to do this. So you're typically out, outside your home. Right. But if you were to start using your home, you probably would max out the five persons a day, if you will. Um, I would or would it be ancillary to your ongoing outside the home business? In other words, are you... No, no. I would like to have this be, unless a client is not able to come to me, because they, they have physical difficulties. I would like to have my client base be at my home. Five a day would be absolute maximum for me because it's very difficult to give five one-hour massages. Um, a lot of the people will come once or twice a year, but it'll be regular. And then some people will come once a month, and then I will always keep openings during the day for people that need to come once or twice a week for a specific problem. And when that problem is cleared up, I won't see them again. And I work with chiropractors and, 
they say i i need you to see them in between my adjustments and so i will keep spaces open for the thank you you talk about doing somewhere in the documentation every two hour intervals i try to keep it at a two hour interval minimum because it takes time to set up the room so that the person who comes in um, it's clean and it takes me time in between to write my medical notes my soap notes and then to read any documents that I have about the client if they're repeat clients so that I'm ready for them and also need to um, sometimes change my clothes wash my hands and be ready and if they're back to back once again that's to not to the benefit of the client or to me I don't like to do people too close together because it's it's not going to be a thorough job and you also talked about the difference between an hour long session versus a half hour yes session. well an hour long massage is more of a relaxation massage where you can have time to really let them relax into it and that has a lot of good benefits to it some people will only come in for a specific problem they have a sore shoulder they want the chiropractor wants you to work on that shoulder only they don't have time nor do they have any interest to have a full body massage but they do need work on their show their their rotator cuff so they'll come in and I will do a massage and stretching that um, the chiropractor and I or the doctor and I have worked out specifically for that problem um, I prefer to give an hour massage because if it's a half hour um, Sometimes, in order to get the muscle to relax, you really have to work very quickly and, and get in what they call deep. I don't know if anybody knows what that is, down into the lower lev levels of muscle, and it's very uncomfortable sometimes. So I always encourage them, if they can, to stay for an hour so that I don't. Envision the week or the day, do you have a mix of half hour and one hour right. sessions that you feel you need? accomplish in order to make this a viable business? I'll probably eventually be able to limit it to hour-long massages. But as I'm starting out, and I've spoken to a lot of massage therapists as I went to school for two years, you start out with half-hour massages if you can't get an hour massage. Because you need to show people how you work and then if they like your work, they will come back. Um, I will always, if someone says, I need specific um, work done on a specific muscle group and I really don't want to come more than half an hour, if they've asked, if I can fit them in to my day in this five client a day plan that I have, I'll accept them, but I would I'm hoping to go to hour-long massages eventually, only. Is it correct that you have a room set aside <coughs> yes. in the home? Yes. What is, how is that room set up? It's a small bedroom. Um, the clients can enter through the living room and then go directly into the bedroom without having to go through family rooms and everything else. Across from that bedroom is a bathroom that is set aside for the clients. In the bedroom, there is a changing area and that is behind a screen for them. And then the rest of the room is open with a massage table in the middle and my, my equipment, my uh, warming pads and I have a stereo for music if they would like, and different ointments depending on what is needed. So it's basically a bed in a room with a changing area on the side. So with the sign, the sign will be next to a, a private entrance to that? The front door. The front I have door. two entrances on my front of the house. I have the mudroom entrance, which is the entrance that you would go to normally, but then you walk across this porch that I've um, built and there's the front door entrance which is where I would like clients to come. 
The, the size of the room is, it appears to be roughly 10 by 10. Yes. Um, and you say it takes about 6.8% 6, 6 of the total square footage of the home. Mm -hmm. Is your basement finished or? No. So that's, that's you're yeah. counting that first floor area plus the yeah. breezeway? Mm -hmm. um, one other quick question about parking spaces. Mm -hmm. Looks like you have roughly about two spaces in your driveway. Well, I can fit four cars in my driveway because it's long enough to fit four cars. I also, right now, I don't have room in my garage, but I normally park my car in the garage. So that driveway is completely empty. Parts of the year, that would be fine, but during the winter months, do you anticipate your car? I park my car in the garage, and then there is room for two, there are, so, there'll be room for two cars in, in, the, in the driveway, okay. side by side. Ms. Robbins, if I may, yes. I have a, a question. Uh, I think you've answered it, but I don't want to interpret it That's okay. for you. In your application on, on the letter of March 8th, in the first paragraph, uh, for justification uh, for, the, for the business in your home, you said that at the present time all my work is performed at the homes or offices of clients. However, such an arrangement uh, limits my ability to develop a sex successful practice. In my initial reading of that, I interpreted that as volume of patients. Um, because on the second page of your letter, under expansion, you mm -hmm. said you have no plans to expand, and in fact, I plan to limit my practice to a part-time profession. And they seem incongruous thoughts to me. But I guess what I'm saying is, by successful, do you mean the quality of, of your therapy is hard to do? Yes, and also, if I have to travel, well, yes, it's not as beneficial. I've had um, people call me, because. I put the ad in the paper and I forgot to take it out. And so people have called me and I've spoken to them and I've said I need to tell you that I can't give a massage in my home. And I've had five clients since January and say, well, I don't, I don't want a massage in my home. I, I'm sorry, I can't, you know. So I've lost clients. Also, when I travel, it takes a lot more time. So I won't be able to successfully do five a day in a part-time practice because a two, it takes three hours in between because of the traveling time, the setting up, the taking down. And then the other thing I explained to you is that it's, it's not as effective a massage when you can't, when this client cannot completely relax. Okay. You stated that you had have been practicing since January of this year, is that correct? Yes. I had my license since July, but I broke some ribs last spring and I didn't feel comfortable opening a practice until I was completely healed. And so I've been practicing, I've been keeping up my skills, um, using people that I had already been using as a student massage. I was practicing with them and trading massages with other massage therapists to stay in tune and to build up my strength. And I decided in January that I was ready. So you have been licensed since last July, is that correct? I, had, I, I graduated in July and I did not receive my certificate until August. It, you have to apply after graduation. August? Yes. Uh, and this is licensed by the state of Maine? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Several questions that I have, and I, I ask these in the interest and intent of learning about your business, and I think this would be beneficial to members of the audience and, and uh, other people who are watching on television so that we can understand a, a bit. Uh, mm -hmm. In your business, do you, do you deal with any medications at all? No. It's outside of my um, practice completely. You said, stated earlier, that it is physically demanding profession. Yes. Uh, in your opinion, what is the maximum number of, of clients or hours per day that you or a typical therapist uh, could, could see patients, treat patients? I think it depends on the type of massage you give. 
how old you are, um, your physical abilities or disabilities. The type of massage that I give um, is quite physically taxing, and I'm, I'll be 50 in April. Therefore, my and my age group and my sex and my strength, four to five is tops. A lot of people I know can only practice massage as a part-time therapist because it is physically taxing. I also know there are younger massage therapists that take eight to ten people a day. But they are in their 20s and they usually don't practice much longer than 30 years old because your joints wear out, your thumb and your elbows wear out. So when I learned when I went to school was if you want to go the long haul, you don't overuse your body. And by doing the student massages and trying out different combinations, I found that maximum for me would be five one-hour massages. And that's a lot. I don't like doing that in a day. I like th three. Three is a good number in a day. Have, have you been practicing full-time since January? No. Have you been practicing five patients a day since no. January? Okay. No. This was when I was in school. Okay. It's part of what we did um, under guidance is learn our own limits. You, this was discussed earlier. Uh, but part of your intent for obtaining patients is, I assume, through referrals? Yes. And what other avenues? Uh, would you please elaborate on that, please, how you will obtain? Word of, um, word of mouth type of referrals from friend to friend is the best way. The other thing that I will do is I will speak to physicians in the area that don't know about me, and I will probably um, explain what my specialties are, and possibly um, this is something that a lot of massage therapists do, is that they invite physicians into their practice to have a massage so that the physician knows what type of massage it is. And then through physicians will refer clients if they think that it's the right good fit. So that's the only ways that I know. And then I put an ad in the courier to let people in the, in this town know that I was available. I don't want to advertise too much because I want it um, to stay under control. You, uh, we understand as the board that you have advertised in the past, in the Cape Courier, I believe. Yes. Uh, do you intend to continue to advertise in the Cape Courier? And do you continue, do you anticipate advertising in, in other newspapers, other periodicals? I don't think so, because I haven't had enough calls to make it worth my while. I think I will, I'm going to depend on um, informing physicians, chiropractors, physical therapists in the area, and um, having the word spread through successful and satisfied clients. When you do advertise, either in the past or if you do in the future, do you have a mechanism for screening individuals who might call? you unknown individual, uh, uh, cold calls, if you will, from an, from an advertising source as opposed or compared to a referral from a, a clinic with a known person. Do you have a, a mechanism for screening those individuals? I don't think I know what you're talking about. Screening, someone might be calling to get information to put in something well, else. If someone calls who you have never met, yes. and they have never met you, there's going to be an interchange of, of questions, right. services you provide. Right, right. Uh, 
and the other side of that, are you, how concerned are you of the type of individual oh, that okay. might be calling you? And I ask this from your position, mm -hmm. from a personal practice and mm -hmm. maybe safety standpoint. Yes. How, okay. how concerned are you? Um, and how we, are you set up to deal with that, I guess I should say? We have, we had a lot of training in that. We had um, at school, that is an issue. Um, when people call, there are certain questions that they ask that will give you a heads up that they really, um, they're asking inappropriate questions. Um, I can't give you specific examples, but I have a list at home, and I, and I actually have had people call me um, who have asked specific inappropriate questions, and I'm, I have said, I'm sorry, I won't accept you as a client. This is not the type of massage that I give. So I've never, and then if someone comes and they act inappropriate, there are a series of things that we were trained to do um, to, make, to make sure that we're safe, they're safe, everything is understood. By the time someone comes into my office, I've asked a lot of questions, they've asked a lot of questions. If it's the first time I've met someone, I spend an extra half hour talking to them before they even go into the massage room. We sit and talk and I tell them what to expect. For instance, I will play music if you would like music. We'll be lying down on a table, you'll be completely draped. If you don't care to undress, you don't. This is your massage. We'll be addressing specific problems. I'd like you to fill out this medical history form so we can make sure that nothing is contraindicated. In other words, there are certain conditions that you do not want to give a massage. It's dangerous. Um, and then we've had a half an hour. During that half an hour, I once again can get a feeling as to whether this person has honest intentions or they have other expectations. And I've, so far, I've only done student massages um, to people that I don't know, but I have done 20 or 30 massages to people that were total strangers to me. And I've never had an issue that um, was difficult. But I did, we do, I think it was eight hours of training at the school in ethics with difficult situations. Do you have any uh, feeling for uh, repeat visitors? How many, how much of a client base is an ongoing repeat versus a one time? Is this, is, is this an issue where people will continue to return or you hope people will well, continue to return? I think what I understand is that people sometimes will come every month for 10 years. Sometimes they'll come every month for four months. Um, I would h hope that 50% of my practice, at least, is return visitors, and I'll tell you why. The first time you give someone a massage, I am educating myself to their specific body issues. And I can give a good massage, but I don't know exactly what I'm getting into until I've, under, until I've had a chance to feel the muscles. So the second massage is better, much more beneficial for the client. Also, if a client comes back, they know what to expect. So their body relaxes better and they get more out of the massage, not only because I know the muscles better, but their body is ready to receive the massage and it's much more beneficial. So I always tell people at their first massage that I hope you come back because it will be more beneficial with time. And I'm hoping that at least 50% of my practice is repeats just because of that.
and you are anticipating dedicating one parking spot is that correct yes okay. and that would necessarily preclude uh, clients being booked back to back with that intent of one parking spot designated mm -hmm. you could not book a one hour at nine and a one hour at ten is is, is that I wouldn't, understood? I wouldn't do that anyway. One of the things that may happen sometimes when a client is on the table, they have an issue, an emotional letdown. Um, I'm not going to force a client to get up off the table if they're in the middle of something. They've had a breakdown. If they need time to cry or to rest or be quiet, mm -hmm. I will go out and if the next client is coming in, they're early, this person is late, I'd say, would you mind waiting? So there may be two cars in the driveway if they are at two hour intervals, if one client is early and one client is late. But I have two parking spots in my driveway. My car goes in the garage. So we shouldn't have any cars on the street ever. And the last question I have for the moment is, you are requesting office hours from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Can you explain to the board why those hours and uh, yes. the lengthiness of 12-hour potential business day? Okay. Um, a lot of people can't get off of work in the middle of the day to have a massage. So they would like to come at 5 o'clock at night on their way home from work. Other people can't see me until 7 o'clock because they have to get home and get the kids fed. So, and that doesn't happen very often. But people, I, I have left my house at 6.30 at night to give a massage at 7 because it's the only time that the person could take it is after their work day is done. So in order to um, accommodate some clients, I need, I would like to have some evening hours. It doesn't have to be nine to nine, seven days a week, but I would like to have some evening hours for the, for the businessman that can't get off for an hour to two hours in the middle of the day. Or businesswoman. How much of an impact on your business would that be if those were limited to some degree? I don't want to practice every evening. And so I don't think that it would be that big of an impact. I would prefer to practice during the day. Um, I, don't, I don't think it would be that. I, I, it would really impact my business if I couldn't practice at night at all. But if I could only practice a certain number of evenings, I don't think that would be an impact because I don't want to practice at night. I've got a teenager that has a lot of things going on and I don't want to always be gone or always be, be taken up. Okay. Thank you. Questions? Mr. Chairman, along the same line of trying to, to sort of clear up, how does one get licensed in Maine, we have pretty stringent, not as stringent as some states, but pretty stringent rules. We have to have, um, we have to go to school, have to have a certain number of hours. I think it's 600. I can't tell you for sure. You have to um, graduate with a certain number of hours, and then you apply for a certificate or a license. Every five years, you have to reapply. Um, since I'm new, I'm not sure what the requirement is, but I have to con have continuing ed um, education credits, and every five years, I have to be recertified. Um, so you have a license now? Is yes. it a probationary license? No. I have five years. You have a five year license? Yes. And the 600 hours, is that classroom time? Practical 
Oh, everything. Yeah, it's a combination of both. My school was much more than 600 hours. Um, all, there was classroom time, but we had massage on site. They took us to nursing homes and hospitals, and um, pediatric massage was done in, in a nursery school, and uh, students went to the Boston Marathon for sports massage. We had weekend workshops where we were three days, eight hours a day, back to back, with massage only. Just a lot of different experiences, and we had a lot of medical training as well. And a graduate of an associate's degree, diploma. It's a certification. Yeah. Is there a school that that, that conducts? There Down East, um, there are schools that are certified, and there are schools that are not. Downey School of Massage in. Um, Walderboro, and um, New Hampshire Massage School in Bridgeton, Maine, are the only ones in Maine that are um, accredited by COMTA, which is a um, organization. COMTA, I can't remember what it stands for, but you have to go through a grueling accreditation process in order to be accredited, and Downey School of Massage is one of two schools in Maine that's accredited. Um, there are, so for instance, the schools in, in um, Portland are not accredited, so you can, get a, you can get massage training, but you won't graduate from an accredited school everywhere in the state trying to remember what other schools. There aren't that many in New England. I can't remember, but like there are some in, Bo some in Massachusetts, some in New Hampshire, but not very many. Well, that's, I mean, what I needed to understand is the licensing, how long, you know, what the process is to get the license, and then right. the accreditation. <coughs> Yes, you have to. Have, you have to, in, in order to be a um, member of American Massage Therapist Association, you have to continue your accreditations as well. So right now, I'm a member in, in good standing at AMTA, and I'm also um, certified. Now, in order to keep that membership, I have to continue my CEUs, my con continuing education units. The same thing as certification. Mm-hmm. From a business standpoint, <clears throat> excuse me, from a business standpoint, um, do you still envision, if you see five clients a day, that it's still a part-time business for yourself? Or are you, would you consider at that point to be full-time? Um, it depends on what my expenses are. I would love to have only five clients a day and not be able to have another job. But I have four children and I'm a single mother and I have college bills and everything else. So it'll, it'll depend on what my expenses are as the children grow up and move away. So conceivably, you may end up seeing more than five. No, no. Physically, I can't do that. Right. I would, I, as I am now, I will have another job. I guess just once again from a business standpoint, the only way to increase revenue at that point would be to, to either raise your rates or see additional clients. So if, if you're capping it at five, you, by physical limitations, you're capping it at five. You wouldn't right. see more than five a day. I don't want no. I would I would take another job, a different type of job, because a full time I cannot be a full time massage therapist. I found that out in school. Physically, it would I would I would last about a year. And I don't. I want this to be something that I can carry on into the retire into my retirement. And so, in order to do that, I have to protect my my body. Okay. And this is this will be your only source of revenue. <coughs> How many folks live in a home? Is it just the two of us? I have a son who's in college, and he'll be home this summer. I don't think he'll be home after this. Do they uh, do they have a vehicle of their own? No. And <coughs> Thank you. Mm 
I'd like to ask Mr. Nugent if you would please come back up to the podium. Thank you, Ms. Robinson. Both you and Ms. Robinson have done an excellent job of articulating the nature of the business that she would propose to do. You, in your presentation, addressed each of the standards for conditional use approval under our ordinance. In addition to the standards for conditional use, there are other standards under the ordinance. And there is one standard that I'd like you to address, and that is the requirement for space. In her application for conditional use, Ms. Robinson indicated that there are 17,441 square feet. 17,441 square feet in her lot. Oh, in the lot, I'm sorry. And in, under section 19-6-3. Can I just grab my copy of the ordinance? Sure. What page was that? It's page 70. It's in the table at the bottom, describing the space and bulk standards for a residential RC district. I'm sorry, I may be looking, is it page 7, did you say? 70. Oh, 70, okay. Okay. I'm sorry, and your question? Presumably, the home business that Ms. Robinson proposes would come under other uses for minimum lot area requirements. It certainly isn't a boat repair facility, a multiplex housing, or an elder care facility. So it would fall under the catch-all of other uses, which in and of itself requires a minimum lot requirement of 20,000 square feet. And the application indicates that there are only 17,441. Bruce, would you like to comment on that? Just that those standards of the use of the property as a single family dwelling, an accessory use to that would be a home business, which is allowed on any lot, no matter what size. There's no standards to have a home business meet a certain size lot, no. It has to be, the only way the home business can operate is within a single family dwelling. This business could not operate by itself. So it's an accessory to the single family. The single family having to meet the density standards for development of a new lot, but being able to operate as a single family or continue to function as a single family on whatever size lot there is with an accessory use as a home business. The base and bulk standards have never been entered into a home business or home occupation before. It would eliminate most home occupations and home businesses. It would only allow them on conforming lots. So that wasn't the intent of the ordinance. Are you aware of any case law that would support that? No. Has that ever been tested? Not 
so 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 basically bruce you're saying that is just as a practical matter the interpretation of this the space is that the space in both stands are basically based on the principal use of a law whether it be a single family dwelling whether it be a, a, a patent building uh, I, I, be a business um, that's 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 the basis for the space and bulk standards and within that space and bulk standards there are things that can happen with such as a home business a home occupation a daycare home um, accessory to the principal use and space and bulk never has entered into the picture, to my knowledge, in, in the four times I've worked in. That wasn't the intent of the audience. And it appears by looking at it in, in terms of minimum lot area, the, the, the enumerated uh, um, businesses above it are boat repair facility, 200,000 multiplex housing, elder care facilities, and other uses. And it, it appears implicit in this that, that, that um, the, and I, I have to say, I. Your question took me completely off guard because I hadn't I hadn't looked at this area, but um, it appears that this is for would be for the primary use of the um, of the business because the boat repair facility is the primary use of the uh, of the area uh, of the land, which is two minimum of two hundred thousand square feet. I think that question might have been raised. Um, and you haven't seen a copy of this, but this is from Bernstein Shore. I think that was one of the issues that was raised, and that's probably where he's and his extra copies here. Anybody from the audience who would like to have one? Okay, thanks. Any other questions by board member? Thank you. Ms. Robinson, thank you for your presentation, and thank you for answering the many questions. I think it was important that we all understand a bit more about your business, and, and that was quite helpful. Thank you. The next part of the agenda is to open the floor for public discussion. We have quite a large audience this evening. Thank you all for coming. I assume that there will be some, some comments in favor and some comments in opposition. But I do thank you for attending. Um, we'll start off by opening the floor to uh, those that have any supportive comments for the application. Anyone of interest, please step to the podium, introduce yourself, state your name, address, and see. My name is Pat Salvi Bothell. I live at 90 Ocean House Road, and I've been lucky enough to be one of Kate's students. I've known her for six years since our children were in junior firefighters together. They're all now grown up. And um, I've been co going to see Kate um, while she could do practice massages before she charged, and now she's coming to see me. And the difference is more than remarkable. Um, we set the table up in my extra bedroom, came into the room to find my cat sitting on it. I mean, within seconds of setting it up, I'm hearing my phone ring, my kids are coming in, we have a business that's right next door to our house, we have a phone line in, I'm hearing business calls. It's not the same at all. Um, the way Kate's got the extra bedroom in her house set up, it is very, very professional. Um, it is very relaxing, everything about it, the way she's painted the room, everything about it speaks to relaxation. Um, I. I give her so much credit at this point in her life to look at what she's got, look at what she's holding. She's got four kids. She's the most dedicated mother you're ever going to meet. And she says, what am I going to do so that I can take care of myself, but I can be there for them? And she put herself through school. It was grueling. Um, I, I don't even think she touched the tip of the iceberg when she talked about watching her go through this and trying to raise her children and and um, be the nurturing mother that she is and setting her house up so that everything was in place so that she could just do this um, i know that mr laplante asked the question i don't know if, if kate made you understand or not she is she ha currently has another job she works for the school system and so that's when you're talking about making more money she, she's right now is working a half day at the high school and then doing these massages. Um, the table I carried up the stairs um, the other day weighs 
probably in the neighborhood of thirty to thirty five pounds it comes with two large gym bags that also have to be trucked in and out so the whole thing of of bringing her into your house and yes i'm when i have to go clean i'm not letting her in the way my house is so i i have to clean so i'm already kind of keyed up and now i'm supposed to have my relaxation massage and i've got all these other distractions going on it's i really hope for her sake and for my sake that there's a way to let this happen in her home um i can't imagine a lower in impact kind of business to have if you had a daycare center or a book group that met at your house anything a, a senior coffee clutch that came in once a week, you'd have more traffic i've watched her have to ice her hands when she's done giving me a massage it is she's physically exhausted when she's done i feel great and i feel bad for her um, but she she does she has to put bags of peas on her hands because of what it does to her to give a massage but she is so dedicated to it and I've had many, many massages by many therapists, and I've watched a transformation in her. I recently had a problem with my shoulder, and immediately out comes the books, and how can we work with this and do this, and what's the best way to address your problem? She's phenomenally professional, and um, I, I'm not gonna lose her. Whether she can do this in her house or not, I'm not gonna lose her. But I really think that it would be a big loss to many other people that could maybe benefit as much as I have. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else with supportive comments? Stephen Butthell from 90 Ocean House Road also. Um, First of all, I wouldn't even come here to speak unless I felt that um, it was going to impact <clears throat> impact the neighborhood that she lives in in any way, because I know so many people in the general area. Um, as far as I also, when she was doing her student test um, practicing, went to her house, and then she comes to our house now, um, the distractions are overwhelming um, with phones ringing and the rest of the people in the house where the room she has it set up it is quiet um, with the music it's just so much more relaxing I have problems with one of my legs and shoulder and it's helped a lot um, in relieving that from all the work that I do every day um, she runs her business very professionally um, and as far as um, impact to the neighborhood, <coughs> I don't think it would even be noticed um, with the one car per you know, client coming in. Um, and just using her, drive, use, using her driveway for parking and everything, um, I don't think it would have any negative impact to the, to the neighborhood. And because of the physical exertion required to do um, do her job, it sort of self-limits. Um, I almost doubt whether she could um, do therapy with five patients per day. Um, she's talking a realistic three to four probably. Um, that would probably be closer to the high end. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else in favor? Then we will open the floor to anybody in opposition to the application. I have two sick kids at home, so they're being gracious and letting me go first. Um, my name is Rita Radio Donovan. I reside at 6 Chambers Road. Chambers Road, um, I did draft a letter dated March 18th, 2004, from myself, um, Rita, and my husband, Kevin O'Donovan, um, in opposition. If, to give you a brief description of Chambers and Oakwood Road, Chambers Road comes off of Ocean House Road, or Route 77. Um, 
and forms a U, runs around in a horseshoe into Oakwood Road. Um, on Chambers Road, there are six physical residences. At the top of the hill, it becomes Oakwood Road and runs around down into the horseshoe, merging out onto 77 in the end of the U. All of the residents <coughs> of Oakwood Road, for reasons because of the physical description of Oakwood Road, use Chambers Road. So it, it, what caught my attention was when Mr. Nugent said there would be no effect on Oakwood Road, there probably won't be because they all use Chambers Road <laughs> to enter or to exit the premises. Um, our roads are very narrow. Um, my husband went out and did some measurements of the road because we have small kids. It's, it's a grave concern when they say 10 car trips a day aren't going to make any additional impact. It will. I can't tell you how many times we're on the telephone as it is with traffic concerns calling neighbors, the roads, the kids can't walk on the side of the road when two cars are driving because there's no, there's no room. Um, the way that the road is designed on Chambers Road, there's a blind hill, wide enough for two cars. If you are coming down over the crest of the hill, which encourages you to accelerate, it's just the design of the road, you can't see if there's small children at the bottom of the hill. If you're coming up over the crest of the hill, you can't see who's at the top. The way that Oakwood Road comes when you come to the top of the hill, you make a sharp turn to the right. The, it has so many hindrances. It, we, could, we could talk about them at length, um, and some of them I will, because I have several grave concerns in regards to wording of, she's applying for a home business application, but it, it, there are many things that would have less impact on a neighborhood if you had a fax machine, a telephone, and a computer, and you didn't have a lot of people coming into your house, and you had a home office, that would certainly be less impact. Many people work out of a home office. Words matter, and I, I find it confusing to find it a home office application when, in fact, she's bringing a business into our neighborhood, and, and, and that is of grave concern to me. Um, the traffic, first and foremost, uh, you know, 10 additional car trips a day. If any of you had the opportunity, I know we invited you in our letter, if you had the opportunity to drive through our neighborhood, it's not a legal width road. Um, you can't enter into Oakwood Road, and if she invites her clients to do so, I can guarantee you that they'll do it one time. Because I don't know who would be liable when they go to leave their appointment and they run into the person coming to their appointment because the road is only wide enough for one car. So you're either gonna back up in both directions so that one of you can go down the hill. Um, it, we, ha we have photos and one of the other people who will speak will show you the photos. It, it's a very small neighborhood. And when it was designed back in the 1950s, I'm sure that they didn't you know, intend for the number of cars that use this road to do so. Um, we, have a very close-knit neighborhood. I know that she referred to one of the letters of approval that she got from the people who live at One Oakwood Road. They rent. They don't own the property. I don't know what investment they have in the neighborhood, but they rent the property. They don't own the property. Um, you know, as a parent, it's concerning to have people coming into your neighborhood, and there's really, let's look at it as a, as a one-way entrance and exit from the neighborhood. So you're bringing strangers into my neighborhood with my children playing, and you've got business hours of 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. and Saturdays. I have a 10-year-old son. I, I'm not comfortable with him being out playing and A, having people drive on a road they're not familiar with, speeding, and looking for a business to find Miss Robinson's house and not looking out for my children who are trying to walk to a playmate's house. You know, these are all things that have to be taken into consideration. I am a working mother. You know, I have respect for Miss Robinson and what she does. I see a massage therapist. My massage therapist rents space. You know, everybody has to manage a business and we can all, you know, look upon what financial woes we have. But we manage our time, we manage our business. And from my personal opinion, I don't feel that Chambers and Oakwood Road and a residence within this tight, very, very small neighborhood is an appropriate place to bring a business that's gonna generate the traffic 
on an overloaded road already and i do hope that you take this into strong consideration before you make your decision thank you hi my name is keith citron seven chambers road and um I've lived on Chambers Road most of my life. I was raised on, on Chambers Road, and I have two young children, and I'm really proud that those uh, kids are uh, being raised on the street. In fact, I've submitted, um, submitted a letter dated March 18th. Um, I, am, like, I live across the street from Rita, and like her, I am really concerned about increased traffic on the road. Um, Oakwood Road is not a legal town road, and in a few minutes I'll show some pictures. And, um, as a, um, as a result, most people go up Chambers Road, their people will speed up Chambers Road. Both um, uh, Rita and myself paid for signs that when our kids are playing out on the roads, we place signs zigzag on the roads to say, slow down children, um, children on the roads, and we zigzag them to force people to slow down. Sometimes they don't. And to bring in another business into the neighborhood, it's going to increase the traffic. And 10 cars a day is a lot. And it's hard enough with kids running around the neighborhood. We've had so many near accidents. I just don't want to have a, a tragedy happen as a result of allowing a business that should not be in the neighborhood to, to be there. Um, Ms. Robinson says she can't earn a, a living working out of her house. There are plenty of massage therapists that share space and earn a living working, working out of their house. Um, also concerned about parking. She has four children. I believe two or three of them are in, in college. Where is everyone going to park? When the, I guess I asked the board, is there a provision that when her kids are home for college and presumably they'll have vehicles, where are those vehicles going to park if her driveway has uh, you know, clients? clients you know, um, uh, I guess... Um, I think property values, property values will, really, will be adversely affected by the business. It's real simple. If somebody has a choice of buying a house in a neighborhood that has a, that has a business such as that, or a neighborhood that doesn't have a business in that, they're going to choose the other business. Why would anyone want to be in a neighborhood, a residential neighborhood that has a commercial business that generates, generates traffic? They don't have to. Um, I'm also concerned about how do we regulate this? How do we know that they're going to be up to five clients a day there? There, there really is no way to regulate it. And I think as other neighbors will attest, um, Ms. Robinson's record with um, obeying the law is not consistent. Um, her dogs run loose. The dog officer has spoken with her, yet her dogs still, still run loose in the neighborhood. Um, there are some problems with her cutting trees on a neighbor's land. I, I just, again, how do we regulate and how do we um, uh, know she will do what she says she's going to do? Because her record does not support that. You know, she um, advertised her business in the Cape Courier in January. And then I believe that um, um, Bruce Smith, the code officer, called her when she advertised her business saying, you know, you needed a permit. And the ad didn't appear for a few weeks, yet it appeared again. Um, advertising, advertising her business. Again, um, when she was told by the town, you can't operate your business in your, in your, um, in your house. Um, and so I, I don't understand why that, why that happened. Um, Chambers Road just already has just too much traffic. And I just really urge you to, to deny this application for um, many of the reasons I stated above. Uh, above, but the primary reason is for this, you know, is for the safe, safety of our kids. There are a lot of kids in the neighborhood. There are more kids in the, in the neighborhood, and I'm just really concerned. We we moved, you know, we lived in that neighborhood because of its residential character, not because uh, we have businesses there. I have a couple of photographs that um, Kevin O'Donovan lives across the street took recently, which I will submit, um, which is um, Chambers Road, and I will I'll submit them here. Um, and often there are two cars parked on Chambers Road. As you can see from the photographs, um, it's very hard to have a vehicle, vehicle go up there. But we also have a photograph taken of Oakwood Road, where you can see it's a single lane road. And I don't know if Bruce or somebody else in the town will test, but I believe that Oakwood Road, it's not, a, it's not code 
standard or my understanding that roads have to be a certain with to be considered a town road and because i remember when i spoke with mike mcgovern a few years ago about complaining about people speeding on the road and um i asked him what he could do with oakwood road he said it's it's not a town town certified road so i guess i will can i submit these to be part of the record here And again, as you can see from those photos, both Chambers Road and, and Clinton Road, I mean, and, and Oakwood Road, have very, very steep hills. And on Clinton Road, again, if one car is going up that road, there's no way the other car can see that. And um, it's just, we, just we're, we're just, very, we're, we're concerned about that. Um, thank you. Mr. Uh, Citrin, one, please. sure. Go ahead. You refer to Clinton Road. That is. I mean, I meant Oakwood Road. Okay. I meant Oakwood Road. Clinton Road's one road over. Clinton's so. not involved in this. No, it isn't. It's Oakwood Road. So I'm, I'm sorry. A um, few questions I have. You, you mentioned on a couple of occasions that uh, Chambers Road and Oakwood Road are not of legal width. Uh, those are not illegal roads. So would you please explain your understanding okay. of? of the statement that that's not a legal right. way my, my understanding, particularly of Oakwood Road, is that my understanding is that the section of Oakwood Road that runs from Route 77 to roughly Ms. Robinson's house, maybe a little before that, my understanding is that it's a right of way. And perhaps, um, you know, we have an attorney that's going to speak later that can define that. It's my understanding that, that uh, town roads have to be a, cert, a certain width, and it was never built to standards, and it was only paved a few years ago. Uh, and my understanding was because it was not a, it's not, it was not paved because it was not a town, town certified road. You're, you're referring to the portion of Oakwood that is designated as a private road? Yes, right? yes. Uh, I would like to make it clear that Chambers Road and Oakwood Road are uh, of legal width. They, if a road was built to today's standards, then there are different specifications, but uh, a significant number of roads in, in the town are gra grandfathered to their uh, existing width. That does not make them illegal. If they were constructed today, they could not be constructed to those standards, and I think that distinction is important. That, that, that this is a legal road, and these are legal roads. Okay, then I, I stand, I stand um, corrected, so, okay. Um, how long have you lived on Chambers Road? I was raised on Chambers Road, so um, 1957. Good. You can, can you explain then, in one of the letters, uh, the, it was mentioned that the private portion of Oakwood Road that intersects with 77, Highway 77, was recently paved or opened. Can you explain the history of that? Was it closed at one time, or has it been a gravel road and was recently paved, and when did that take place? It was a gravel road, um, and it was probably paved within the last five years. And, um, and it was paved and uh, my understanding was paid because we were we spoke with the, with the town manager about we wanted speed bumps put on Chambers Road for some of the people speeding up there. And they said we can't do that. And then we said, well, can you at least pave that part of Oakwood? Maybe more people drive up Oakwood. We're trying to have less traffic traffic on the road. And so it's my understanding is that's why that's why they they um, they paved the road. But that's when in the conversation with with the town. My understanding was that it was not a legal, a legal road, but I, you know, again, I, you know, you've read, you've read the uh, laws, so it's, it's been, it's been gravel until about, within about five years ago. So it was paved at, at one or more of the neighborhood residents' request, is that correct? Yes, it is. Yes. Okay. Um, does the town plow that area and maintain that area, that private designated area? Yes, they plow it. They do plow it? Yes. And they did surface it? Yes, they did. Okay. So it is maintained by the, by the town? Yes. Um,
Okay, that's all I have. Thank you okay. very much. Okay, thank you. I have a question as well. Uh, earlier, in your, when you were speaking earlier, you mentioned that bringing another business to the uh, Oakwood Chambers area. Is there another business, another home business that you know of in that area? Um, there are, yeah, there, there, I, I, there is, I think there's another business on Oakwood Road that the neighbor, um, that a neighbor operates. It does not, but I don't think he advertises. What's the nature of the business? Um, it's jewelry. What was that? It's, um, I think, I think he just makes jewelry and, you know, and some people come pick up jewelry once in a while. Um, uh, one other question. What is this posted speed limit on those, on those roads? You know, there's no posted speed limit. So we put up a sign saying 15 miles an hour that we put the signs up when the kids, when the kids play, but there is no posted speed limit. There used to be a sign there saying, you know, the signs have said children, you know, uh, you were children, but that really didn't help. We found the only way to slow down traffic was to put signs in the, in the middle of the road, say 15 miles an hour. Now, other than businesses that are will or are located that the people who are traveling it live in that area is it is that wouldn't that be correct a pardon other than the businesses well the people who are traveling those roads live there yes that's correct conceivably they're the ones doing the speeding as well um yes yeah <coughs> definitely to your knowledge um in your experience in, in residing there, has there been any traffic altercations or anything that would indicate uh, you know, more people going through there would increase the incidence of you know, prob problems? Well, I, I say that we, we've had the incidents that we've had in the area have been speeding, spe you know, uh, people speeding, speeding in the area, and so. Um, I guess my, my assumption is that more cars that go in the neighborhood, there's more of a chance of those incidents happen, happening. Um, and so it's mainly been people speeding there, and I think some people talk about their experience of going on, um, driving on Oakwood Road, and some uh, times they've had it back on Oakwood Road. I don't drive on Oakwood Road because it's too dangerous. Are you aware of any accidents that have taken place in that area? I, I, speeding is, is a concern throughout. I know there's, in our neighborhood, it's a concern. I know another neighborhood subdivision where it's a repeated concern and brought to the town. So this is not unique to your neighborhood, unfortunately. Have there been any accidents in this area since 57 that you're aware of? Not that I'm aware of, and maybe some other neighbors, they may, they may be aware of it, but I, I am personally not, not aware of any. I'm aware of some near misses and some speeding, which I've witnessed, but I've, I'm not aware of accidents. And it, it's your feeling that a, an additional car periodically throughout the day would uh, uh, create a safety hazard. Is, is, is that a concern? Uh, I know that it is, but I, I can only assume that over the years in your neighborhood that there have been occasions where there have been high traffic events, whether it be a, a party, a wedding party, a reception, anything of this nature where a uh, family holiday where a number of cars and, and traffic would increase significantly. Uh, uh, that can be a periodic concern. Uh, compare that with one, one car uh, occasionally throughout the day. Uh, I, I guess I help am. Help us understand why that is a concern uh, uh, in view of someone traveling and perusing the neighborhood, for example. Yeah, with no destination yes. in the neighborhood. No, and I understand what, what, uh, what you're saying. Our concern is that because of, the st because of the steep hills, whatever, that it's hard to see children on that road. And the more traffic there is on the road, the greater there is a chance of, of perhaps a, of, of, a, of a mishap. 
um, the visibility around those hills on Chambers Road and, and, Oak, and Oakwood Road are, it's, it's very, very hard to see kids. And so um, all, it, all it takes is one, one car, one, ac one car to, to have, have an accident. So, um, you know, on Chambers Road, I think the road is way overtaxed as it is. And so this is just adding, adding more cars to it. I agree with you in, in the, I drove through this uh, loop several times, and I agree with you that the Oakwood Road Hill is quite steep, and it certainly is one lane at the peak of the hill. Have you, if this has been a concern in the past, have you approached the town in regards to this? Have you brought this issue to the town before this particular event tonight? As, as a concern in, in the years that you have lived there. Uh, you or anyone in your neighborhood, are you aware of, yeah, of we, the town being petitioned? We've, we have spoken to the town with concern with all the traffic and the speeding on Chambers Road. And uh, we spoke with the, the police department, with Mike McGovern, and a few years ago we were really kind of putting the pressure on because we you know, we were trying to find a way to get speed bumps in the, in the, in the road. And it was a result of those discussions that, that I believe that, that Mike had that road paved, maybe having more traffic, maybe more cars would go on Oakwood Road. Um, but we were dealing primary, we were dealing with Chambers Road, the Chambers Road people with, with the traffic. And so we, uh, you know, we had um, discussions with um, Police Chief um, Williams and, and his predecessor and with Mike McGovern over the years about the speeding. So Oakwood was paved at your request to alleviate the traffic concern, has it? No, not really, maybe slightly, but not, not really. Um, I think as, as Rita Rady, who spoke before me, said that, I think all it takes is a person to drive that road one time, and they're probably not going to drive that road again. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just, again, I, I guess as you, as you drove up, as you can see, is there, it's, almo it's almost a one-lane road near the crest of the hill. And you get to that hill, another car comes, comes down that thing. Somebody's going to have to back <coughs> out. I wish we could have speed bumps, but it's, it's clear from the town we're not going to we're not going to have speed bumps. The reason why we are continuing to address this issue is that this is one of the conditions relevant to to that, and it's a significant condition. And we value your opinion as longtime residents uh, in regards to the traffic condition. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Okay. Thank Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else? Good evening. My name is Ed Dilworth. I live at uh, 10 Clinton Road with my wife, Susan, and we've lived on Clinton Road 38 years. Um, I'm here tonight to request that you reject this application. And the basis of my request is that when it comes to rules, regulations, laws, conditions, in my opinion, Mrs. Robinson doesn't follow. And I have two examples to cite to you. One was mentioned earlier, her dog. Repeatedly, her dog is in my yard. Out of the courtesy that my wife has, I probably wouldn't. Called Mrs. Robinson twice in the past two weeks to tell her that her dog was running again in the yard, even though we've chased him out of many times and I know other people have called. The last time she called her, Mrs. Robinson said, it can't be my dog. He's here in the mud room. As my wife and I were looking at the dog standing outside the door. Within a short period of time after my wife hung up, the dog obviously was called because he hightailed it up to her house. Um, yesterday morning, as my wife was leaving the house, the dog was at the front door. And this time I called the Cape Police. And the officer came down. The dog had gone by then. It's the typical thing. He told me he's there and he's not. Um, but he said that it's been an ongoing problem with Mrs. Robinson. So I bring that to your attention. When she first moved in, um, whenever that was, it was approximately August of the year, 
that i was out in the yard and i noticed a bunch of kids over across the pond with a swing in the tree and i walked over to them and i said as i got there they had cut down trees so the swing could swing they had built a platform up in the tree and had a step ladder up so they could get up it was about eight or ten feet up in the tree i said to the kids i hate to spoil your fun the swing has to go. I said, I don't want to take any responsibility of any of you kids coming off that and falling and getting hurt. And I was told that it was their property and they'd have to speak to their mother. So I said, is she home? And they said yes. And they went and got her and she came over. And I said that the swing had to go. And she said, well, it's my property. And I said, well, I said, I don't know who told you that. She said, the realtor told me that. I said, well, if the realtor told you that, he wasn't telling you the truth. Because the realtor called me, asked me if I ever had my property surveyed, which I did. And did I have a copy of the survey, which I told him I did. And could he have a copy, which I gave to him. So he knew exactly where the property lines were. Um, she, at that point, agreed that the swing would have to come down. And to give you an idea of how high the swing was in the tree, she told me it would take a while because she needed to get a bosun's chair to get up there to get it, the rope. Um, at the same time, I pointed out to her where the property lines were. There were pins in the ground that the surveyor put in. There's a stone wall that runs. It's kind of broken up, but it runs along the property line. And she said that, well, it's a good thing because she was going to cut some trees down. And I said to her, don't cut any trees on this property. You've already cut some down for the swing. Don't cut any more. I said, I'm a reasonable person, and at some point, if you'd like to cut some trees down, come and talk to me. Because she's got a very narrow backyard. Um, a couple of months later, uh, I was working on my property, and I noticed something didn't look right. So I walked over, and there was an area approximately 100 feet by 30 to 40 feet that was virtually clear cut. And a young lady came out and said to me, can I help you? I said, yes, I'd like to speak to someone about all the trees that have been cut down. She said, you'll have to speak to my mother. So she said, she's not home. I said, when she comes home, have her come and see me. So Mrs. Robinson came over, and my wife and my niece, who was living with me at the time, accompanied me over there. And we stood where all the trees were cut down, and I said to Mrs. Robinson, the audacity that you have to have cut all these trees down after I pointed out to you in a previous discussion. And she stood there and said to me, what trees? And there were the stumps that had been just cut fresh wood. In her backyard were the logs from the trees. And in her front yard was all the brush that she had stacked up waiting for the fall cleanup pickup to get rid of the trees. Um, as my wife would say, I uh, became unglued, okay, because I had gone to the trouble of pointing out to her exactly where the property lines were, and yet she just went ahead and did what she wanted to do, okay. I told her she'd see my lawyer, she'd hear from her, which she did, and I sued her. And the conditions that I agreed to, finally, when she agreed to settle it, was that she had her property surveyed, at least the back line, so she would know exactly where the property line was. That she plant trees along the property line, and since I had done this under the state of Maine timber trespass laws, which are triple damages, she paid damages. So, in my opinion, okay, if you approve this, no matter what conditions you put on it, whether she only can see five people, she can only operate certain hours, Mrs. Robinson will do what Mrs. Robinson wants to do. Because she certainly demonstrated that to me in the few years that she's lived there and how she's handled things. Thank you for listening. First off, I'd like to thank the board for giving me the opportunity to address. And I would like right now to submit to you 
29 signatures. Excuse me, could you state your name? Oh, address? yes. My name is Connie Turcott, and I live at 9 Oakwood Road. My property line abuts Mrs. Robinson. Thank you. And I have lived there since 1956. Um, as I said, I would like to submit to the board 29 signatures of people on Oakwood Road, Chambers Road, and the peripheral abutters on Clinton Fox Hill Road that would like to have you deny this appeal for this massage parlor. Do I give this to the secretary? Yes, please. Okay, <clears throat> Mrs. Robinson first advertised for her massage business in the January 17th Cape Courier. And when I saw this in the Courier, I knew she did not have a permit to do this, and I contacted Mr. Smith, and uh, he was going to contact her. The next step was to make application for the February meeting of this board. And around the middle of February, she took off on a vacation, and hence the February meeting was canceled. However, when she came back at the end of February, she once again advertised in the March 6 Courier, knowing full well she needed to make the, an application for this. And once again, I informed Mr. Smith. So twice she's opened her business again, disregarding the laws of Cape Elizabeth. Mrs. Robinson moved onto Oakwood Road in 1999, moving here from Robin Hood Road in Cape Elizabeth, where she knew the laws pertaining to the dogs. Since 1999, I have had a running battle with her to leash her animals. She will not do this, and I bring this before the board only to show Mrs. Robinson's total disregard for the laws of the town of Cape Elizabeth. In my opinion, the lady is distru distrustful. When a business is started, the prime reason is to make money and to grow, and three to five clients will grow, which is exactly what one of the questions you asked her. And the town of Cape Elizabeth cannot control this. She is requesting hours of operation to be nine to nine, and sometimes on Saturday. So how can we believe she will only have three to five clients a day? And I ask, what happens if the daily operation of this massage parlor runs late? Are the hours of operation going to be 10 or 11 at night? My property, abuts Five Oak Road, and I've lived there since 1956. And when I sell my home, I'm going to ask you, who will want to buy a home next to a massage parlor operating nine to nine? Frankly, it'll seriously devaluate my property. <coughs> I have brought up two children in this neighborhood, and I can tell you I would never buy a home on a street with an operating massage parlor in existence. And also about the traffic. I am very concerned about the increased traffic on a road that is a single lane road, which is pretty much what it is when you come from Ocean House up over the hill on Oakwood. This is a single lane road with a blind spot at the top of the hill. And since 1956, I can tell you there have been many times when I had to either back down or back up the hill to allow a vehicle to pass me by. Now, on February 10th, a large Suburban was parked in front of her house, not in her parking lot or her parking space, but on Oakwood Road for two hours, which is what she's saying, she gives these massages for two hours. Now, I'm going to say to you, if there had been a fire on Oakwood Road, the fire trucks and the emergency vehicles would have had a difficult time coming up or going down Oakwood Road. And this, frankly, relates to public safety of citizens. 
Many people going to her house <coughs> used the street for parking. Now, when Mrs. Robinson was away, the traffic on Oakwood Road, believe it or not, was down about 90%. Now, I happen to know this because my house sits on the hill, and her house is down below me. And when I go from one end of my house to the other, I look out the window. And I can tell you the traffic was down 90%. I was absolutely amazed. Um, this business of hers will definitely generate more traffic on this one lane street. And finally, the little neighborhood, this little neighborhood for years has been a quiet and wonderful place for children to learn to ride bikes, to play safely and just be kids without wor worrying about safety issues. And right now we have a safety issue with this business going in. And if this board denies her application, I can assure you, as Mr. Dilworth said, there is no guarantee that she will stop doing business at 5 Oakwood Road. Thank you very much. Ms. Turcotte, I'd, sure. I would like to ask you a few questions, and sure. I'm sure other board members would, but we should take a five-minute recess at this sure. time. So can I ask you to uh, sit down, wait patiently sure. while, while we take a five-minute recess, please? Thank you. In a perfect world, you're right. What? Perfect world, you're right. <laughs> huh? Which one? Should go? No. <laughs> no. Because I pick people. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Turcott, for the brief interruption. That's okay. Anyone have questions for Ms. Turcott? <laughs> I guess just one comment, um, and, and Mr. Mr. Uh, while I empathize with everything that I'm sure that you're dealing with it and working through the, uh, the, the different scenarios that might take place, it, I think it's unfair to Ms. Robbins and any other person who is a physical therapist or massage therapist that to characterize their business as a massage parlor. Um, that really denotes a much different type of business and certainly not a professional one. I think we just need to be fair about that. Okay, well, I can understand what you're saying, but here, um, from the American Heritage Dictionary of the English Language, fourth edition says that a massage parlor, first off, is an establishment that offers therapeutic massage. So I, I thought that we are using the correct wording by calling this a massage parlor. The second is an establishment that offers illicit sexual services under the guise of therapeutic massage. Okay. So I just, a massage parlor is more commonly known as the second definition, which you just read. So yeah. Just, just an observation sure. on my point. But I knew we were using, I thought we were using the correct wordage here. Mm. Do you, you normally use Chambers or, or Oakwood? You, you, you referred several times of when you exit, you use Oakwood and it's narrow and it's dangerous where Chambers is wider and more convenient. Uh, 
Is there any reason why you haven't chosen to use the wider of the two streets? Yes. During the winter time, the spot that my house is located, I don't have a choice of going up the hill. I have to go down the hill because of the snowy roads. I am right on the side of the hill. So I have to go down Oakwood Road in the winter time. You can't turn to the right when you exit your driveway? Not get stuck. Okay. It's a shop right out of, I have two driveways and both of them are at a shop angle. So it is much easier to go with the flow and just go down Oakwood. It is definitely going to bring more traffic on our street. That's for sure. And, and I can give you a little bit of a, you were asking earlier about the history of Oakwood Road. When I moved there in 1956, I was only the second house on the street. And that entrance from Oak, Oak, Ocean House Road to where Oakwood started was a right of way. It was gravel, and the town would have no part of paving it because every time the snow plow went over the hill, the plow was broken. There is a, um, it's all ledge. And it, when it, you come up Oakwood Road, you're right on ledge. And for the town to blast that and, you know, even out the road was an impossibility. And that goes back to 56, 57. Thank you. Any other comment? Thank you. Anyone else? Hi. My name is Jane Parrish, and I live at 6 Oakwood Road. Um, first of all, I work for a physician in Cape Elizabeth, and I'm the office manager. And I know all about scheduling. And you don't, you cannot count on somebody showing up when they say they will. And you can't, they come early all the time. They come late. They show up out of the blue to make an appointment, to make a payment. You just can't at all commit to your day. You have to be there. You have to wait for them, and you have to expect them. So all that aside, um, I live across the street. Um, I, my biggest issue is traffic. I am worried about traffic. There are blind curves through the whole loop, as you know. Um, for somebody coming for the first time to this area, they don't know what to look for when they come up either one of the hills. They don't know what's around the corner. They don't know where the children are. I don't even know where all the children are. They play around. There's so many. I have two. Next door there are two. We all have play dates. They're all over the neighborhood. Um, we have hill jumpers. I don't know if you've heard of those, but we have a, a good hill down below me on Oakwood. Um, we have teenagers that stop at night in front of my house and rev up and shoot down the hill. I don't, at 8 p.m. at night and it's dark, if somebody's coming up for their appointment, they're gonna smack into them. And I have my next door neighbor who's not here is just fed up to the ceiling with these people. They're kids. There's, we can't do anything about them. We've called the police. He's yelled at them. He stood out in the road. But they're, we call them hill jumpers and they're a big problem. Um, I think that traffic at 8 or 9 p.m. or if it runs late, if they cry and it, they have to stay later at 9.30 or 10, that's longer than the IGA is open. There's a reason we shut down this quiet town at night. We want to stay quiet. We don't want traffic. We don't want anything. Um, my, the value of my home. I bought it a little over a year ago. And I bought into a quiet neighborhood. I didn't buy into a neighborhood with a business already in it, and I didn't know that there was one potentially coming. So I could have saved some money, you know? And when I go to sell it and somebody comes to look at it, and I have no intention to sell it right now, but, you know, and there are tr cars, or they say, what is that, a business over there? And I don't know. I just feel like the property value is really at risk, and I feel like I would be subsidizing her business. Um, 
and I wish her the best in her career. And I know it's a very good business, and I hope she does well. I'm done. I'll ask you this question. Just I could have asked any one who has spoken. Are there any, in your mind, are there any acceptable times for her to operate the business? You reference night, you reference traffic. Traffic is ongoing in every neighborhood. I mean, there are going to be cars through any neighborhood. An accident could happen. It hasn't happened since the 1950s in your neighborhood, apparently. Are there any times that um, would be acceptable to you? Ten to three during the school year. Sorry? Ten to three during the school year. You know, or, well, kids get off the bus at two. So, um, and they get off at 77. So maybe even like 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. during the school year would be the only, you know, that's when the kids aren't there. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I'm Connie Burns, and I live at 8 Oakwood Road. I live next door to Mrs. Parrish. And I submitted a letter that I think is in your packet because I didn't know um, if I would make it here tonight. I have a question for the board, if, if that's OK. Uh, Dr. Chapman's mentioned that he um, drove around our neighborhood. Have other members of the board taken that opportunity to drive the loop from Oakwood to Chambers? Are, are you familiar with? You are familiar with the road? Great, thank you. I think that, that that's pretty important. It appears that everybody has. Is that great? That is correct. That's great. Thank you. Um, just to reiterate what other people have said, I, I've lived there in my house nearly 23 years in May, raised my three children there, um, value the quiet residential neighborhood, very concerned about the traffic. Um, we all who live there are very aware of the little, little children in the neighborhood and the middle-sized children in the neighborhood. and new people coming in would not be familiar with that. Um, there's really not a lot of traffic in the neighborhood, so adding a few cars would be adding a lot. The value of our property, I just finally paid my mortgage off after working very hard, and I think that that will, will neg negatively affect the value of the property. And I'm concerned with compliance. Um, I know you just asked Mrs. Parrish what acceptable hours might there be. I would be afraid that, that the board would agree to 10 to 2 or whatever. And how, how, is, how do we know that, that that restriction will be complied with? Who, who monitors that? I mean, who has time to police that? Um, I would have a lot of concern, given the, what you've heard tonight, um, about other interactions with the neighbors. Um, and also concerned about who is coming into our neighborhood. Who will, be, who will be coming into into the neighborhood would be a concern. I'll ask you the same question. Are there any acceptable times in your mind? No, not to me, no. And I, I am fond of massage, and I imagine that Mrs. Robinson is trained and a wonderful, uh, wonderful um, masseuse, and I would suggest that she, you know, take her skills and practice them elsewhere, just not in a residential area. One of the issues that we as a board are faced with is that the town ordinance provides that a home business can uh, take place if it meets certain criteria. Uh, right. And in reviewing those criteria, we do not have any regard. I'm speaking to you because you've brought up points that other people have brought up, so this is to everybody yes. in general, not to you in specific. It's fine. Uh, a number of people have brought up Ms. Robinson's past history. Uh, we as a board cannot base our judgment on past history, nor can we base it on future uh, uh, consistency with the rules or regulations. We are simply obligated to evaluate the current application in view of the current standards, each element of the standard for, for this. Uh, your concerns are, are valid, but we do have to look at it 
in view of the fact that it is a, acceptable to have a home occupation according to our town ordinance. Mm -hmm. And to, uh, so we do have to look at what times would, what aspects of it can and cannot meet the ordinance. Uh, so I think it's important for you to see where, what we are faced with in voting upon. Mm. Well, I understood that um, there, needed to, there needed to be on the permit five or six areas um, of impact, correct? Correct. And, and so that you would, you would look at those areas. That's and I think that's what we're trying to address. And one of those is traffic safety. Certainly. Uh, and uh, anticipated concern is, is uh, what I've heard voiced a number of times uh, in view of the fact that your neighborhood has not had a traffic history of, of accidents. Uh, have, do people, as a rule, exit, enter on one location and exit on another? Can, can you say that, or since you are also a long-term uh, resident, do you enter and exit on the same street, or do you make a loop? I don't use Oakwood Road. Um, I, I, use, I live on Oakwood Road, but I live on the corner of Oakwood and Chambers. And I use Chambers Road because I, that crest of the hill, is, there's just no visibility at all. I, I nearly ran into Jane's husband a few, you know, when they first moved in, and I happened to go down that way. I don't usually go down that way at all. It's, you probably, did you drive it both ways when you drove it? Yes, I did. Up and down, yeah. Several times. Yeah. Okay, thank you. You're welcome, thank you. Good evening, my name is Joan Fortin. I'm an attorney at Bernstein Shore Sawyer and Nelson. I submitted a letter to the board dated March 19th. I am gonna just highlight some of the comments I made in the, in the letter. I'm not gonna uh, read that to you. But I also wanted to um, just address a couple of comments that Ms. Robinson made in her presentation. I guess, first of all, what I want to say, and echoing what some other folks have said, I, I too am a great fan of massage. I, I don't think the message here is that this is a bad business or that um, it, you know, it, it shouldn't happen anywhere. I think, given the nature of this neighborhood, that it's an inappropriate location in this place. At, on Oakwood Road, this location is not appropriate for this type of business. We're not talking about an accountant who is going to be working in his or her office um, through mail and fax and phone. We're talking <clears throat> about a business that's going to bring people to that location every day, several times a day, in order for Ms. Robinson to have a viable business. So um, the issue is not that this is a bad business. It, it's a bad location. Um, one question I had, or I guess I would have if I were you, it just involves the space that this is going to take up. Ms. Robinson had described that the, um, the entire operation is in a single bedroom in the front of her house. And then in response to a question, I believe the chair asked about safety concerns and screening. She said that um, she's going to sit and talk with people for about a half an hour in her home before they go into the massage room. So that raised an immediate question to me is, is there yet another part of the house that's part of the business? Are, are they sitting in the living room? Um, so to the extent that she said that the business will only be in the bedroom and that that's 7% of the house, one question is, where is this half hour interview going to take place and does that, how does that change the space? Um, I guess the other primary, uh, the first point I want to make is um, just kind of reminding you of the standard of proof here. And I think it is entirely appropriate and valid to be asking all the neighbors all these questions about traffic and their concerns and accidents in their neighborhood. Um, and the fact that there haven't been any, that's fortunate. But I do remind you that when it comes time to vote, that your ordinance places a burden of proof on Ms. Robinson to prove that she meets each of these conditions, not on the neighbors to prove that her application does not meet the conditions. So that's just something I ask you to keep in mind when it comes time to vote. 
Um, the first point in my letter, I talked about the uh, non-conforming lot size. And that's something that I think the board should think about. And, and I understand the subtle point that Mr. Smith was making about a home business as an accessory use to um, a residence. And, I, and, and that's true, and I don't disagree. However, under your ordinance, in the definitions, you have a definition for home business and a separate definition for home occupation. And in home business, it talks about a home business is, quote, more intensive use than home occupation. That suggests to me that even if you go with the premise that um, this is essentially just a residential use, just by virtue of the fact that this falls under the category of home business, it's suggesting under your ordinance definition that it's a more intensive use. It's bringing more traffic. It's bringing more activity. There's something more happening. So the point I was trying to make with my letter is um, she's already on a small lot. She needs to have 20, um, a, a house, a single residential unit, not in a subdivision, it's supposed to have 20,000 square feet. She does not. I'm certain her home is grandfathered. That's not the issue. But when she wants to bring a home business to that location and intensify the use, then I think you need to look at the fact that that's an intensifying and non-conforming use. Um, and I, th I think that it wouldn't be appropriate for the board to approve that under these circumstances. Uh, in terms of the, ha the hazardous traffic and parking conditions, it, uh, you probably feel like you've been beaten over the head with the road issues, but I, I, um, I just want to give you one more quick story because some people have said a new person coming to the neighborhood wouldn't know. Um, I went to the neighborhood for the first time. I, don't, I live in Portland. I don't live in Cape Elizabeth. I went to the neighborhood for the first time just recently, and I have two small children, so I am always very aware of, is there anybody in the road? That's a constant concern of mine. When I came onto Oakwood, I was first struck by the fact that I was in a single lane road. But then as I started to go up, I realized I couldn't see what was immediately in front of me because of the pitch. Then as, you know, it sounds like you've all driven the road, it swings up and around the corner. And then when it started to drop down chambers, I, again, I, I was thinking as a mom, I thought, if there was a kid down there, I wouldn't be able to see. And sure enough, as I dropped, I don't know who lives on that side, but it was on the left. Just as I was coming down, there was a, I would guess she was probably two, I don't know, but a little, very little girl playing with her mom in their driveway, but because her house is so close to the road, she was playing close to the road. If I lived on that road, I think that would be of grave concern to me, and I think it is a very valid concern that the people have here. And with all due respect, the fact there hasn't been an accident before would be very small comfort if there was an accident. Um, the, uh, I guess the other thing <clears throat> in terms of traffic is um, you can't really compare a single event, you know, somebody having a wedding, a party, a graduation, to someone who's saying, I want to open a business and have up to five clients where there will be 10 extra trips a day. That, I think that's um, obviously quite different. Um, I think there's an issue about how many trips there will be per day. I know um, Ms. Robinson talked about because of her health, she's going to limit herself to no more than five people per day. Um, I, I just asked you the question if uh, she talked about doing 30-minute massages to start out. Well, if things don't go as she plans, and that's the only thing people are calling for, if she's getting a lot of people who want 30-minute massages, that's five clients, 30 minutes, that's two and a half hours a day, $175 a day, that's not a lot of money. I, it seems to me there would be at least some potential um, that that five clients a day might grow to more than five clients a day, at least on some occasions. In terms of in, uh, the parking, I, I'm not going to cite all the ordinance provisions because they're in my letter, um, but on page three of my letter under section C, I talk about insufficient parking. Your ordinance requires that she have two spots for the residents and two more spots for the business. So she actually needs to have four spots. She said that she doesn't usually park in her garage, but then she said she does. So I, I guess that's just a question you'll need to ferret out. Even assuming that she has two spots in her garage, and two spots in the driveway for four spots. Um, your ordinance also requires that the spots can't obstruct each other. Um, so she does have two clients there, and th there's no way that they cannot obstruct each other. Your ordinance also requires that um, 
a person not have to, that the parking is provided such that um, the driver doesn't have to back out onto the street. And if you've all gone by our house, as I have, you can see there's no room to turn around. People will have to back out on the street. So um, her parking's not sufficient on a number of grounds, as well as the fact your ordinance requires in a couple of places that she have a um, handicapped parking spot. So um, that's something to consider as well. I, I understand from my client, Ms. Mrs. Turcott, that um, there's a lot of parking on the street near her house, and um, with the narrow road, I think that it adds, there's an added public safety concern um, that Mrs. Turcott mentioned, which is um, if there's any kind of public emergency, fire, ambulance, and there are people parked on the road, and it's winter time and there's snow banks, there's an issue of people, um, emergency vehicles being able to pass. In terms of um, the standards for conditional use approval, the first, the first standard says um, that the applicant has to prove that any conditions prescribed for such conditional use will be satisfied. And I appreciate that that is a, a bit of a sensitive subject and um, I'm not really sure how you are supposed to determine that. You've heard some people tonight who came and gave you some historical perspective to say they question that. Um, I understand you're trying to give someone the benefit of the doubt and need to look forward. That's for you to ferret out. Again, I remind you, it's her burden of proof to show that, that she will comply with those conditions. I think you've heard um, some valid concerns that perhaps she might not. I think there's material in her own um, submissions that would make you question that. Um, Ms. Mrs. Robinson talked about the fact she's not been doing business out of our house. She's been doing it only at clients' homes and offices, and yet she submitted a letter from a chiropractor who talked about her facility being clean and professional and talked about the services she provides to clients in her home. So I think that right there um, should at least raise a question in your minds as to whether she is in fact gonna comply with any conditions that you may decide to place on an approval. Uh, I guess just real quickly, the last one in terms of the property values, my only point there, I'm not gonna to try to testify to um, what will or won't happen at property values, but under Maine law and under a town involving the Cape Elizabeth, uh, the, the town of Cape Elizabeth, it's clear in Maine that property owners have, um, it's legitimate for a property owner to testify to their value of their own home. So the, um, the fact that there are any real estate brokers or appraisers here is really not relevant. I just want you to know as you're, as you're weighing the various evidence that you've heard here tonight that, that it is acceptable as evidence in Maine for a property owner to testify to what will or will not happen to their own property values. Um, my final point really is just the operating hours and um, others have mentioned that as well. 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. seems like an awfully long time for a business, especially in a residential neighborhood. Um, I guess I just wanna make a real quick point also about this being a residential neighborhood. I, I live in Portland in a very residential neighborhood. I live over near Brighton Medical Center. Um, not that I would like to have lots of businesses near me, but I think it would be much more appropriate in a more typical neighborhood where you have normal sized blocks. I don't know how long a normal sized block is, but I think all of you will probably agree, this is a very tight horseshoe. That's a very, very small area. Um, so I don't think this is a typical neighborhood. So the fact that we, I have people going way too fast, I think, down my street, and probably many of you do as well. I do think this is a unique area in that the roads are so narrow, the, st the hills are so steep, and the, the horseshoe is so tight. I think that's important to keep in mind. Um, so operating hours of nine to nine seem awfully long. Um, if, if children, it, there aren't sidewalks if children aren't able to play on the street or walk to a friend's house um, without concern that there's added traffic. I, I think that that's a legitimate concern. Um, and should you decide to approve this, I certainly would hope that you would condition um, shorter operating hours than this. That's all I have. I'm happy to take questions if you would like. Thank you. I have question comments if I could. Does anyone else like to make a comment? Uh, couple of points regarding points that you have made uh, regarding lot size initially. It's my opinion that that does not apply to this particular situation for several reasons. Uh, it, 
the, the residence is grandfathered in this uh, in this particular location, and the lot size is grandfathered. Uh, and the home business is simply a valid accessory to the grandfathered residence. We in Cape Elizabeth do not look at grandfathering uh, a home business. Uh, the, the primary grandfather situation, if, if you can call it that, is the residence. And we do can interrupt for a second. It's the grandfather is the size of the lot only. The, the residence is a permitted use. So we're mixing use. Everybody seems to be mixing the use and the lot size. Um, the non-conforming lot. The non-conforming lot. The use as a single family and the use as a home business within a single family are both permitted uses. Otherwise, a home business wouldn't even be coming before the board if it was a non-permitted use. Right. But it is a, thank you, but it is a permitted excess, accessory. Correct. Correct. To a permitted use. I understand your point. Father. That was my point. Mr. Smith made it much better than that. <laughs> uh, Uh, parking spots. Uh, regarding the parking spot, she has, she states she has one car. We, past board rulings have, we have looked at the two spaces in a garage as two parking spaces. Uh, two spaces in the driveway is two more. She states that she can park four in the driveway, I believe, two next to the garage and two behind those two. So I'm not sure that parking, number of parking spots is an issue. Uh, as a board, we have the ability, in the, according to the ordinance, to, to modify the parking spots allotted for a home business. Uh, it's typically two. Uh, we have the ability to modify that to one parking spot if, if we see that it's necessary. Um, Regarding backing out of a parking spot, that, uh, according to the ordinance, uh, that you, the point you mentioned about backing out, uh, uh, reading from your document, which is a quote from the ordinance, uh, parking areas, uh, parking uh, fails to satisfy the requirement that parking areas for uses other than single family and two family dwellings shall be designated so that vehicles will not back out onto the street. Uh, that is designated as a single-family dwelling, and, and with this being accessory to that, we typically do not look at backing out as a relevant requirement for a, a home dwelling. Uh, for obvious reasons, uh, it couldn't be satisfied in, in most typical uh, garage driveway situations without extensive modification of, of the driveway and and so uh, in my mind and past rulings by the board that backing out is not a requirement to to satisfy as part of the home home ordinance uh, home business ordinance uh, again I'd like to point out that that prior com compliance is not something that we as a board can can rule on. That's that's subjective in our mind. But well, that I is not part of the requirements condition of the ordinance. And that was something that a uh, point that you brought up. May I disagree Please. with you? <laughs> Please. Your ordinance says that she has the burden of proving that any conditions prescribed for conditional use will be satisfied. I think you've heard valid, valid evidence here tonight that that's not true. I think if you're in a court of law, you can't um, hear prior bad evidence. I mean, when I heard what you said earlier, I'm thinking rules of evidence, and I think that's valid in a court. I don't know any case law that says you can't consider the evidence that you heard tonight in terms of considering whether or not she wouldn't comply, will or would not comply with those conditions. Well, obviously, the if if any person violates, uh, that would be recognized by one of two methods, either first-hand knowledge or uh, if someone calls in and, and informs the code enforcement officer of a violation. And that would certainly be an avenue that, that could be addressed. And I, 
feel reasonably sure that if violations were reported, that they would be dealt with. Uh, I'm not sure how please. much of an extent exchange you want. So, uh, I think one of the concerns that certainly my client has, and I know some of the other neighbors have as well, is this is an extremely hard business to police. It, you know, they make a call and say, there are cars there till 10 o'clock at night, and uh, I don't know Mrs. Robinson, so I'm purely giving you a hypothetical. I'm not trying to comment on her character. She or anyone in her position could say, yes, my mom was visiting, my friends were visiting. I, I mean, how are the neighbors supposed to demonstrate to you that she isn't complying with the ordinance, and how in the world can the town police this business? It's not... That it, it's not unusual for a, a lot of things that, you know, you do the best you can. You got 30 residents that probably would call me and, and let me know, and granted, she could make up a story, uh, but if it's ongoing, um, it, at some point, the town would have to take some action, even if that meant me working overtime and <laughs> getting license plate numbers and calling it in. I mean, that's an extreme, but I mean, an isolated problem with with two people telling different stories, yeah, that's a problem. But, you know, if it becomes a real problem, then I think we'd, we'd, we'd take action to address it. I mean, I, I, I don't doubt that for a second. I um, have a municipal practice, and I work with code enforcement officers all the time, and I do enforcement actions, and I think that would be an awfully hard violation to prove. And I think the neighbors have a legitimate concern that if she doesn't follow the conditions or any conditions you put on approval, it would take an awful long time and it would be, you know, a very difficult thing to correct. And I think that's a valid concern from my professional experience. And how is it unlike other businesses that, that have a similar situation? The burden Welcome. here is for Mrs. Robinson to prove that her business will I not be I understand that, but if we use that tactic on, and I'm not, you know, I don't want to argue this, but if we use that tactic on every business that comes before the board, that they may not do what they're supposed to do. I, I mean, we shouldn't be proven, or the board shouldn't be approving any business, I guess. Again, with all due respect, I don't think that's the evidence that you're hearing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> any other question? Thank, Thank you. you for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Anyone else have any comments? I think it's only fair to Ms. Robinson. There were a couple of points. If you wouldn't mind, uh, there were a couple of questions, one of which was regarding, are, are you Mr. Uh, Nugent? Ms. Robinson, maybe you want to address it too. There are a couple of points, if I could. Good. I have two questions I'd like answered because people in the audience brought these up, one of which was multiple ads after, after the first ad was requested to, or pointed out to the code enforcement officer, uh, was reported that a, an additional ad came through. I'd like Ms. Robinson's uh, explanation on that. Uh, the other was, uh, Ms. Robinson stated that one room would be uh, used for her therapy and it was pointed out by someone in the audience that she would start them in one room and move them to another room. I'd like that ex expounded upon and the um, those are two for now. Um, I'll let Ms. Robinson um, answer a couple of those. What I would like to point out to the board is with regard to the ad the ad doesn't contain her address. It simply contains a phone number. Um, she was prohibited and she recognized that she couldn't practice in her home without a variance. Um, she did have a practice, as she explained, going to other people's houses. So I think the implication here, and especially with Ms. Forden's letter, which I think is, is, was very unfortunate, to imply that uh, this was, uh, you know, this was a blatant violation. There's nothing, there's no address here at all. It doesn't say uh, um, anything about in my home or anything else. Um, I think Kate will explain. I think there was, there was a, 
she probably would have pulled it had she known it was going to be published in, in March. She didn't intend to. But in fact, this, this is not an advertisement that, that mentions her home at all. The second thing that I, I would um, point out, I can't, I can't talk about the dogs. I don't know. I've had my own problems with my own dogs running my way. Um, and actually, I knew the dog officer here when I lived on Broad Cove Road fairly, uh, fairly well, because I had two. But um, I do want to say one thing with regard to Mr. Dilworth's comments. I represented Ms. Robinson in the um, issue with Mr. Dilworth. And Mr. Dilworth was represented by his son, who practices law in the western part of the state. Um, and I think his, his comment about his becoming unglued by the matter is probably quite appropriate. I won't go into the details, but just I would like to say that there are two sides to every story. And um, the unfortunate circumstance with the boundary dispute is hardly germane or at all relevant to um, the, the question of whether or not uh, Ms. Robinson will uh, comply with any restrictions that the board places on it. I, I think your last comment was valid, and I agree, but I'll correct one thing. I think there are three points to every argument. <laughs> party one, party two, two. And, and possibly the actual. I understand. I will submit that. that My comment on that issue. Thank you. Ms. Robinson. Mm -hmm. Uh, two questions that we'd like to address, uh, three actually. The One is the ad, and I believe that was addressed, uh, that other people have brought up. Second one was your notation of one room versus moving from one room to another room. And, and the, the final question was uh, the, the, the comments that you have been seeing clients in your house uh, prior to this date. Okay. First, the ad was a total mistake. I didn't go on a vacation. I have a job during the summer working um, at a mountain backed lodge. And during February, we take a group of clients on a, um, you know, a warm weather tour. And I went to Costa Rica. So I was busy getting ready for that tour, trying to arrange everything that needed to be arranged. And I literally forgot to call the courier and say, cancel the ad. So that was just um, because I had too many things on my mind. Um, the room. I understood, I, I guess, the massage room, the therapy room, is where I do my work. But when you are giving the, your first impression with a client, they feel very uncomfortable sitting in that room. And so usually I will sit with them for at the dining room table, which is a much more uh, less threatening place to, to have an interview. Plus, the light is better. So it's not dedicated just to massage therapy. And that's why I didn't put it in as being used as a business, because the dining room is not used just for massage therapy, as is the room that I have dedicated to that. So that's why I, I didn't include it, because I guess I didn't understand that I needed to include the dining room if I was going to use it. It's not get dedicated just to the business. All right, the third thing was Seeing clients, I have not been seeing clients. I was, as I said, I didn't feel ready to start my practice. And then, you know, January came, and I decided, okay, new year, start your practice, put the ad in the paper. And Bruce called me and said, you can't do this. So I said, okay, I won't do it in my home. I will travel. The people that have come into my house, I have not been paying customers. They have been family. I have th three children, 
not living at home, but I have two adult children that come and go, and um, my daughter. I have um, other massage therapists that we trade often because I need a massage as much as anybody else. Also, it's a good way to learn and to practice new skills. And um, the letter from my, the chiropractor that I work with, he, like I said, I introduced myself to doctors and chiropractors in the area. And one of the things that they like to do is they like to see the facility because they're not going to recommend their clients, their patients to someone until they're sure that the, the therapist is what they need. And so I have had just one chiropractor and one doctor come into my room and look at it. One doctor I have given a massage to at her request because she wanted to know what kind of a massage I gave because she has a very specific clientele of um, people who are um, chronic pain sufferers and they have to be dealt with in a different way than somebody who was giving a sports massage. So I have not been charged. This has just been part of building a business, is introducing this to the, um, the medical people in the area. <coughs> Any other questions? If pending outcome and as far as restrictions placed upon your hours, how much of an impact to your business would significant restrictions as far as operating hours be? If I was restricted to 10 to 2, that would be very difficult because I work in the schools. And then I would have to give up my job in the school in order to practice massage therapy. And that's the goal eventually. But when, you, when I'm building a practice, it would be very difficult for me to give up the only income that I have. And because um, I'm still I'm, I'm, um, a single person. Uh, single mother. So that, if, if you're saying that I can only practice during the school day, that would be very difficult. If I was limited to the daylight hours only, or the work day up until five, I could manage with that, and I guess what I would have to do is either turn away clients who couldn't come later, or possibly travel, although I can think of two or three that I would lose right away because they live a long distance away. Gray, Buxton, and the reason that they like to come to they would come to me, they came to me as a student, is because it was on the way home. And I couldn't travel to Gray. It would be exorbitant and I would have to charge double the price because of the traveling. So if I could practice one night a week in order to have any clients that could not make it during the day. That would, that would be something that would work really well. If Saturdays were an issue, I could do without Saturdays because children are home on Saturdays. Um, somebody said something about 10 to 2 during the school year. Well, that would be very difficult because during the summer, a lot of um, people come into the town who are looking for a massage. And I can't shut down for three months out of the year. Um, it would be possible for me to practice without any kind of signage at all. Without what? Signage, you know, little sign. Um, because I always contact people, people always contact, they don't knock on the door. We have an initial phone conversation. 
i don't have an address out there i don't let people know my address i have a phone number they must phone me i give them directions once they phoned and we've discussed and it seems like the appropriate thing then i make an appointment then i call them i could tell them directions and in the directions say it's a very narrow street with very bad visibility you must drive slowly there are kids at the top i could tell them right in the directions right now i do say it's a very narrow street with bad visibility be very cautious when you drive up i haven't mentioned children but that's the way i've always dealt with it because i have kids too and i watch the kids in the neighborhood i'm one of the mothers who's home during the day who's able to scooch scooch up those kids and say where's your helmet get off the street how come you you know so i'm i'm the one of the ones that's already watching the children and i'm sorry you said you work part time or full time at the school right now i'm part time i work in the mornings so then in the afternoon five days a week yes <clears throat> I could touch upon uh, the scenario of, I'm not concerned so much about new clients, but what about established clients that sort of say, they don't like to use the telephone, that sort of say, gee, I'm on my way home, maybe I could pop in and see if there's any openings. I mean, is there, how would you deal with something like that? Um, I'd, how would I deal with that? If they just drove up to the house? Yeah. You know, is there an opening? And I mean, I'm, I'm on my way to somewhere in town. I just wanted to, just wanted to pop in and see if you had any openings. You know, but sort of the, the established client who might pop in to see, so instead, of, instead of using the telephone. Uh, oh. I, with, with the people that I've practiced on, I can't imagine that happening. But if it happened, I would obviously, ha you know, have to stay within my limits but i think i would i think i would ask them to call first if they drove up to the house i would probably say i'm sorry and i'm not ready because that would be the truth mm -hmm. so it probably be you know dirty laundry and everything else there's a piece of massage therapy for me which is that i need to be centered and if I'm not centered, I don't give them a good massage. And I have to keep those boundaries or it's not going to be a good experience for them. I just had a question uh, in the future, if indeed we can grant you this, um, this permit. Um, do you foresee advertising your address in an ad? No. You would see it similar to what you've done? If I ever, I don't know that I'll ever do that again. It doesn't seem like it's, a, it's worthwhile. It, but I, would, I don't want people to do an, a knock, you know, knock on my door. It just doesn't work with this type of business. And also, I have a, ch a child at home still. And I wouldn't want to have to put her in the situation of having to answer the door and, and have to deal with that. So that's a safety issue for me as well. Thank you. I don't want strangers coming to my door any more than anybody else does. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other comments from members of the audience? We close the floor to public comment and open it to comments from members of the board.
seems clear to me that all of the discussion center around two issues two issues that we can address as members of the board of the five conditions one is traffic and others value of adjacent property an ordinance states that the proposed use will not create hazardous traffic conditions it appears that currently they're not ideal traffic conditions in that area uh, due to the narrow road of Oakwood and the crest of the hill and I can certainly see that does this home business create hazardous traffic conditions according to the ordinance if if the traffic density is can either be 10 cars or 2 percent that was recently changed uh, clearly if the business is operated under the conditions of the ordinance and she maintains no more than five client visits a day and that will create the 10 and she passes that condition of the ordinance uh, that part of the condition of the ordinance regarding traffic density now does it create a hazardous situation if i may be allowed to think out loud uh, it's it's a hazardous street possibly that hill as it stands now could be construed as that uh, whether this creates that i don't I'm not sure that the, the business creates the hazardous condition. Uh, any traffic has a potential to be hazardous on that road. Another bit issue is property value. Does anyone have comments regarding that? Whether this will adversely affect property value. I concur and one one of the ways I view it is is myself completely removing myself from the situation that's being discussed here tonight if I were looking at a piece of property as a prospective buyer knowing that there was a business either next door or in the in approximate vicinity of it I, I know that, <coughs> that would have some bearing on my determination as to whether I would purchase that property or not so the neighbors who spoke I I do <coughs> have some empathy for for what they've stated and I do believe it carries some value. Hi, Mr. Chairman, if I, if I may, I think your comments on the, uh, I agree, the two areas that I circle with, with traffic safety and, and property value. And, I mean, without this condition being allowed, it's, it's fair to say that it's a very hazardous condition on Oakwood and Chambers Road because of uh, speed violations. The photographs that were submitted to us had cars double parked on the street and cars parked out on the street. It's a small neighborhood, uh, and yet speed seems to be a generational problem with small children around. So, <clears throat> and by driving through the, through the neighborhood several times, um, with or without a business, it's a, it's, a, it's a dangerous place. And some of those can be corrected if, if the neighborhood changed its own practices, whether or not there was a business there. Um, so on one side of the argument, any addition of vehicles is sort of 
adding an additional factor to a bad scene. But I think a lot of those, <coughs> if people at the neighborhood decided that this was a, an important value, uh, that they could reduce some of the risk in that neighborhood just by their own driving practices and whether or not, you know, up to 10 cars a day would add a difference, probably not. But I think the existing neighborhood is actually kind of, um, it, it's volatile and I think any additional cars would be a, would be a problem. The, the value of property to me is always a speculative um, and you can paint a picture, you know, we have some, some uh, of these permits that have come uh, to our review, which are very, very low impact businesses, uh, were in more or less intellectual type of either think tanks or, you know, uh, graphic designing or one employee who comes and parks a car on the driveway and leaves at the end of the day and <clears throat> maybe you know, one, one or two visits by a UPS truck. I think having um, clients come to the home on a regular basis to me is, is not necessarily a low impact business. I mean, I think that does sort of change the characteristics of a neighborhood somewhat. Um, and I'm just thinking out loud. I mean, I think um, it's a slightly different type of business just because you have uh, a very population of people coming and going versus a pretty, you know, uh, uh, I think foot traffic, whether it's, pardon the pun, automobile traffic, um, even if it's only a few cars a day, is a little bit different with this type of business. Uh, for the board, I'd like to point out one uh, one fact that I noticed, and that is that regarding blocking of a road, if a car is parked on the road and there is 10 feet available to pass that car, according to the laws of the state of Maine, that is not considered blocking access. Uh, car parked on the side of the road, if there's 10 feet available, then that is not considered to block access, according to state laws. I just wanted to bring that reference up. Any other comments? Mr. Chair, as a matter of procedure, as we work through the conclusions coming down through the judgment, is it my understanding that the conclusions need to all be found in favor for the motion to carry? That's correct. Uh, we are required to have a simple majority of voting members to approve each of the five conditions. There's six in attendance if they all vote, then each condition is required to have four votes in the affirmative to approve the condition, and all five conditions must be met. Any other comment? Let us proceed. We'll be voting on the five conditions. Number one, the proposed use will not create hazardous traffic conditions when added to existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. All those in favor? All those opposed? There's three in favor, three opposed. Sorry? One abstention. Number two, the proposed use will not create unsanitary conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions to the air, or other aspects of its design or operation. All those in favor? All those opposed? Would be five in favor, one abstention. Number three, the proposed use will not adversely affect the value of adjacent properties. All those in favor? All those opposed? That would be one in favor, three opposed, one abstention. 
Number four, the proposed site plan and layout are compatible with adjacent property uses and with the comprehensive plan. All those in favor? All those opposed? Five in favor, one abstain. And number five, the design and external appearance of any proposed building will con constitute an attractive and compatible addition to its neighborhood, although it need not have a similar design, appearance, or architecture. All those in favor? All those opposed? One abstention. Point of clarification on three, what was the vote? The, the final vote? On, on three, yeah. It was three. two. Uh, I thought you said one in same. favor. Oh. And it, two numbers don't add up on that one. Three opposed. Two in favor, three opposed, two, one abstain. Two in favor, two in favor. three opposed. Okay. One abstain. One abstain. Okay. Okay. Item number one. Failed. Great. Item number three. Failed. Great. Two, four, and five were found favorable. All five conditions were not met. May I have an affirmative motion indicating? Do we need a motion at this point? Probably ought to finalize it based on, it's a formality, but based on the conclusions. I have a motion. I move that the, uh, the application be denied as much as it feels. No, it has to be an affirmative motion. I move that the board approve the denial of the uh, application of, uh, of Catherine Robinson for a conditional use. The we should make the motion and, and the affirmative that the motion for Catherine Robinson for a conditional use permit for home business specifically a therapeutic massage office and treatment room at her residence be approved. Um, based on the conclusions, two of which failed, that motion cannot be approved. Based on those, the vote. The motion is denied. The, the permit is denied based on the vote of the conditions. Next order of business is communications. I have none. Does anyone on the board have any? Thank you. Secretary Thank you. That was not a communication. That was a final <laughs> order of business. Thank you. Uh, at this time, I'll ex accept nominations for secretary for the board to replace Jack Neely's vacancy. Taking I nominate Mr. LaPlante. Okay. Nomination for Stephen LaPlante. Do I have a second? I, I would like to decline that, please. I don't feel I have the uh, time to uh, manage it. Any further nomination? I would like to nominate Gib Mendelson. Let's approve it while he's not listening. <laughs> second that. Well, approved. I give to the secretary. All those in favor? 
All those opposed? What do we do? <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> the, next meeting, <laughs> the next meeting date is April the 27th. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Do you know it? So moved. Motion to adjourn. Have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>